Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Lex, if you're new here, and I do all types of planty stuff on my YouTube channel. Today I actually have a few plants that need to be repotted, so I figured why not sit down and record a chatty repot video. I asked you guys to send me some questions via Instagram. If you're not following on Instagram, you definitely should because that is where I'm the most active. I'm just going to take you guys through the plants that I picked out today that I want to do some repotting and address. So the first plant is this giant Parisio Verde. It's very tall. This is the newest leaf on the top here. It's got these crazy aerial roots that I don't really know what to do about, but um, I'm probably gonna put it on a moss pole. Not in the video, I'll probably do it later, but I have to repot this into a bigger pot just because it's completely outgrown it. So I just wanna address the situation with this plant um, today just because of how obnoxious it is. The most ideal thing is probably that I should cut it, but I really don't want to cut it yet. I want it to keep producing these really large leaves. So I'm probably gonna just leave it as it is, stick it on a pole or keep it on a stick or something like that for now. And then once it gets a little bit bigger, then I'll cut it. Then I have this Syrtis mirabellus plant here. This was actually an import from Aeroid Asia. Roots were not in that best shape, but I actually cut them off and I stuck it in water for a few weeks so you can see it's grown a lot. So I would like to move this to some sort of semi-hydro, um, either LECA or I want to try moving plants to just perlite because I know a lot of people do that. I've never tried that before, but I think I might try it out this week. I also have some other water crops that I want to move to semi-hydro as well today. I have this. Syngonium aria cutting here. It's got a little bit of roots, but I'll probably move that to Lekka or Perlite. I have these little cuttings of this Hoya Australis Lisa. As you can see, it has little tiny roots, but they do really well in Lekka, so I'll probably move that to Lekka today. I also have this Hoya here. This was an import as well from Aeroid Asia. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but there is a little bit of confusion because the label said that it was this plant, I'll put it on the screen, but I don't think that it's that and I'm not that 100% sure on Hoya. So if you guys know the name of this, please let me know. This is what it looks like. It's really cool looking, but you can see it's got um, these roots here. But yeah, this is what it looks like. So probably moving that to semi hydro as well. I also have this little Anthurium Duriaki. I think that's how you pronounce it. It has been living in this little cup for a little too long and I just do need to move it into a regular pot now. It's super cute. It's growing really, really quickly. So I want to get it out of this cup as well and get it into a regular pot. I have three different types of seedlings here. They are algae ridden. They've been living in moss, dried up, crusty. I just need to get them out of these and into their own pots or little cups or whatever. This one here is a Magnificum cross with a Dr. Block. This is its newest little leaf coming in. There's three Anthurium Queens in here. They're actually growing really nicely. And then in this one here is, I believe it's Anthurium Forgetii, but I forgot because I don't label any of my stuff because I'm an idiot. <laughs> But I do think it is a forgetty eye. I'll have to um, double check, but I, I think it's just a forgetty eye. But yes, I definitely need to get these guys out of here. And I just know it's gonna be a nightmare because they're in moss. And if you know anything about me, I hate moss. Like, I just do not like moss. I do not like using it. I hate, like, I hate messing with the roots with the moss. Like, it's just, it's just too much for me. So I know that they have a lot of roots already. So I might just, try to move them into just regular potting mix that I use, but just try to make it not as like chunky and just keep up on the watering. I just noticed getting the moss out of here is gonna be an absolute nightmare, so. So for all of my plants, I do not keep any of my plants in regular potting soil. I make my own custom soil mix um, consisting of cocoa husk, cocoa chips, perlite, bark, and some other stuff. It is completely soil free. I do not use any type of soil at all on my plants. I do not go to the store and buy bags of soil, nothing like that. I just do not like soil at all. If you're wondering, yes, I do have to actually add nutrients into the potting mix because I don't keep slow release fertilizer in there and there's no natural fertilizer type of thing like that you get with like soil in there. I actually read somewhere on some Amazon review. I don't know how accurate this is by the way, but that sometimes that the little 
the little beads don't fully dissolve and then they end up like in a landfill or something like they're like plastic I'm not sure 100% how true that is but I would just prefer not to deal with that. I just try to be as sustainable as possible, so I would rather just avoid that entirely. Currently, I only do fertilize all of my plants, including the soil-free mix, LECA, water, whatever, using Dynagrow. It is a liquid fertilizer, and that's just what I prefer. I've talked about this before, but that is what I use. And if you're ever interested in trying out our soil mix that we use, we do actually sell it. We sell it in bags of 12 ounces right here. You can go to the website and you can pick up one or two, whatever you want to do to try it out. It is a very chunky mix and aeroids really seem to love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep all the plants to the side so I have a little bit more space here. I have this empty bin here that I'm going to use to put all the old soil in and then when I'm always finished with old soil, I keep it and then I will boil it later so that I can like sterilize it and then I can reuse it again later. So it's all going to just go in here, um, I'm not throwing it out. Just just the heads up. And then underneath of me, I just have the perlite and the leca for the semi-hydroponic plants that I'll be using as well. I have the big bin of soil mix here. I keep it in a really big bin like this. This has been pre-washed and rinsed, so it is ready to go. You should always be rinsing your soil mix and your additives and everything like that because they do have a lot of dust. So you just wanna make sure you rinse it and soak it like overnight or something like that. So since I did do my nails this week, um, I'm actually just gonna be wearing gloves. I try to always wear gloves when I'm doing all of my repotting because like I said, I do my own nails at home. So I don't wanna like ruin my nails. I just use these um, black gloves that I got in like a big pack from Amazon. Okay, so the first plant that I wanna just start with, I guess let's just start with something easy. I'm gonna start with the little Doriaki here. He's in this little cup. So I'm gonna get him out of this cup and I'm just gonna put him into a regular four inch uh, clear pot. I do sell these pots on my website along with some other type of pots. Um, clear pots are kind of my thing. Um, I only use clear pots, glass, cups, anything like that. I don't really use cover pots or anything or like solid nursery pots, nothing like that. I just prefer clear pots because I just like to be able to see what's going on at all times and I just like the aesthetic. So I do have these on the website along with another style that's a round pot that's uh, five inches. And actually coming up in the future, I'm going to be having all types of different clear pots available as well from a supplier that I am working with. So look out for that. All right guys, so the first question that I have was, which is better for Monstera's, potting soil or LECA? I would say in my experience, I don't think I would ever move a Monstera to LECA just because Monsteras have really like robust root systems and I just feel that you would be like up potting the, the LECA so much and it would become so heavy. It might be like kind of unmanageable at some point. I've seen people do it, but for me, I have a really, really large Monstera that is probably about 50 pounds. I would never move that plant. Um, if I took like a cutting, yeah, maybe if it was like this big or something like that, I would probably do like a just, just because like it's like a fresh cutting or something. But in my experience, I don't think I would move a plant that has such a robust uh, root system to LECA. I just feel like it's a bit risky and I think it's just overall, it would just be a little bit too much. Like I said, I have seen people do it before. So it's not that it's like not like doable, but I just feel that that might be a little bit too much maintenance for me to deal with. So I think it just depends on if you have the time to put such a, um, you know, big plant into LECA. And I don't know if you're like doing like a fresh cutting of a Monstera or are you like thinking about moving it from soil to LECA. I just feel it might be a little bit much. So not saying that I don't recommend it. It's just... I just think it would be just a little bit too much work for me personally, but you should definitely maybe test it out by taking like a uh, by taking like a cutting or something like that and seeing how it works for you. This plant is so cute, you guys. 
you guys should definitely try to get one. They're so cute. They're kind of expensive though, I feel like, but I don't know. It looks, you know, all anthuriums, I feel like they look very similar, but this one is really cute. I actually don't know how big Doriakis actually get though. Um, if it's anything like the silver blush, I guess it can get pretty big, but here it is. So cute. Looking all good in its new pot. This leaf is probably going to go soon, but I'll let it be for now. Next plant that I want to work on is these little cuttings of the Hoya Australis Lisa. They're so cute. I really... I'm starting to get into Hoyas, I guess. Not like super rare ones, but I'm starting to really appreciate them. I just like Hoyas when they're this size though. I don't know if anybody else is like that. When they start like getting really like traily and stuff, I don't, I don't know if I like actually like that. And I feel like putting them on a trellis takes up a lot of space, but I cut these down so that I could have like really tiny ones and then sell the, the rest of it um, on my shop, so. This is what I'm gonna do next. I think I'm just gonna keep these in a little tiny cup like this. This is a dessert cup that I actually get at the Dollar Tree. They work great, um, they're cute too, and they're you get them like in a pack. So I'm probably gonna put both of them, I think I guess I'll put them together, why not? Um, I think I'll just do, I think I'll just put them in Lekka, but I kind of want to try like putting them in perlite, but let me see. Cause I feel like their roots are so tiny still. I've been recently loving the coarse perlite. This is the number three grade size. So I've been really enjoying the really chunky perlite for all of my mix. So I'm just gonna put them, I guess, just like down here. Like in the middle like that and then I'm just going to put some extra on top to hold them down so the next question was how do you keep your cats away from your plant my cats actually do not bother like any of my plants I have three cats so I have Evie who is the gray cat cookie who is a tabby and tortoiseshell mix and then we have piper who is a calico piper does indeed have an obsession with the plants but as of lately she doesn't mess with them anymore why do i feel like this is like not working like how do you get this to stay in there should i just like am i doing something wrong <laughs> Why can't I, why is this like the hardest thing for me right now? Piper had like a little bit of an obsession with like the pothos plants that we had and some like snake plants where she would just like chew them and like spit them out. Like she wouldn't like actually eat it or anything, but she's calmed down a lot with that. Um, so she's like, doesn't like bother them. So like now we're able to like keep the big greenhouse like open and they don't go in there at all. Cookie and uh, Evie, they don't care about the plants whatsoever. Yeah, I just have to like watch her sometimes though because I don't feel like I fully trust her. Um, but like I said, she's like only really obsessed with like pothoses and like snake plant. And I do have a snake plant which she doesn't bother because I have it like in a basket, but we did keep like this little cutting of a pothos on our kitchen table right here. And sometimes we would find that like she would like pull it out of the water because it was like a propagation. Um, but she didn't like put any bite marks or like either or anything like that. But yeah, for the most part, the girls do not mess with any of the plants and I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to worry about like closing up everything and stuff like that either. So I am just so happy about that because you know, these plants are toxic to them, but they are just, they don't care. All right, so here's this guy. I put him in perlite as best as I could, um, but I'm going to, at the very end when I'm done, I'm gonna rinse all the plants and give them a really good watering, but I'm going to just keep the water level probably pretty high for this one just because their roots are like up here so I'll probably put it pretty high and then I'll just like just keep it like damp so that they can absorb the water like that so this guy is done 
I'm really excited to try out the perlite, so excited about that. The next plant that I'm going to pot up, I'm actually gonna pot up in Lekka. This is that Hoya that I talked about earlier. It is very weird. It's hard. And it like grows on this branch. It's super weird, but I don't know. It's kind of cool though. So I'm gonna pop this one in Lekka, and the question I'm gonna answer next is actually about Lekka, so I figured why not to talk about it. The question is, is there a difference in care with a plant in Lekka if you keep it in no drainage with a reservoir or a two pot system with drainage and a bottom reservoir? Personally, I don't feel that there is a difference in care exactly. Um, I think it's kind of the same situation. So if you don't understand how Lekka works, right? So I could pot this whole plant in a cup or whatever with no drainage hole at the bottom. And then I would keep a water reservoir about this high, one third to like a half. The Lekka will absorb the water and expand and feed the plant the water through the roots like that. And what will happen is the water reservoir will slowly decrease till there is none. So that's how you know when it's time to water. So that's how you do it when you have a pot with no drainage. What the person is talking about about a two pot system is simply like this. I will try to demonstrate um, as best as I can. So let's say you have your plant in Lekka like this but you have drainage holes, right? So what you would do is you would take another item, like a cash pot or something, you would fill this with the reservoir here to one third or one half, just like I said before, and you would just simply put it on top. And then when this bottom part runs out, you would just take it out and then you would just simply fill this up again. The only thing that would be different really in care is probably when it's time to flush the Lekka. Flushing the Lekka means that you're simply running water through it so that it can drain all the minerals and stuff like that because you do get mineral buildup. So if you have one that has a drainage hole, it's very simple. You just put it under the water, it drains out, right? Very simple. If it does not have a drainage hole at the bottom, what I like to do is just literally take it, cover it with my hands and just run it with water and tilt all the water out for a good like minute or two until it's like flush. So that's probably the only like realistic difference in maintenance and care. Um, that I could see with doing a, a two pot system or a no drainage hole. I've never done a two pot system because I just prefer to just do it in a no um, drainage hole. Quick little tutorial on how I do it. I fill the cup like halfway or more of the Lekka. This Lekka has already been pre-soaked and rinsed so it's all clean to go. And then what I just do is I just fit the plant in like that and then I'll just top it off with Lekka on the top so that it stays in place. Just like that. And you just wanna make sure all the roots are covered. So this is literally what it looks like, like that. And then what will happen is as the plant grows roots and you'll start seeing the roots like on the side and stuff grow all the way to the bottom. And then when it's time to repot is basically when the roots kind of just take over the whole vessel. Since this plant was a water prop, I'm actually going to give it a lot of water than I normally would. Normally I try to do like one third here, but I'm gonna give it a half just because it's so used to being in water that I don't wanna shock it from not having like a lot of water. So I'm just gonna pour it in like there. And then that's it. And then once it drinks all the water, I'm just gonna do the same thing. And then I flush all my Lekka plants about once a week. So that's really, it's really, it's really, really easy. The next plant I'm gonna do is the Cirrhotus mirabellus. Look at that new leaf. This was an import from Arid Asia. It is going to lose this leaf. So I actually just went and I cut the, um, that leaf off, but yeah. This is the roots. It was um, growing in water. Um, instead of me doing semi-hydro with it though, I think, I might just pot it up. I really do want to do semi-hydro with it, but I think I might just pot it up instead. I just don't want to like risk like losing this plant because I've wanted one of these for so long. So I'm gonna just pot it up in a four inch clear pot like that. The next question that I have is, do you get easily discouraged with social media? Um, I would not say easily discouraged. Um, discouraged, yes, but easily no. I do not care about anything. Um, I do not look at numbers at all. And 
I really just don't care. <laughs> um, yes, do I get discouraged sometimes? Yes, of course, especially when, you know, pictures and reels on Instagram aren't performing as well as they should be especially when you have like a good amount of followers and it's just not being seen by your following that's kind of annoying to me i'm not here to seek out followers i'm not here to get a good amount of likes and everything like that it's just the quality of work and this social media is a job for me at this point so i try not to look at numbers and be like all upset about numbers i know the quality that i put out is great and that's all that matters to me so like i really just don't care but one thing I do get discouraged about and I'm trying to stop doing this is that I do sometimes compare myself to other content creators. Um, not in a sense of the content, but in the sense of I get very like upset because they have a really nice background. They have a really nice house. They have like an aesthetically pleasing plant shelf. They have big windows with natural light. They can film their content in natural light and I can't. Um, I live in an apartment that has no windows in my living room besides my patio door and it's north facing so I get no light in here it's literally a dungeon and that's like super discouraging because you know I when I'm taking my thumbnail pictures and, and stuff like that I'm just like oh my god it looks so ugly like who wants to watch this you know but I just know that the quality is there and I can only do what I can you know not everybody is gonna have a Pinterest style house and not everybody's gonna have Instagram worthy plants and you know stuff like that like at the end of the day like yes those accounts are gonna do better because unfortunately they're just more aesthetically pleasing than mine but I can't compare myself to that because there's really nothing I can do right now and I just have to work with what I can and I'm not gonna let that discourage me to the point where I'm not gonna post so that's really the only thing that bothers me about that but other than that I don't really get uh, discouraged at all I just pump out content and that's it I usually just post my stuff close the app and then I'm on I'm on about my day. I'm not gonna be hung up over some likes and some views and some followers, it's, it's really not that serious. So this is the final look. I cut that leaf off, it looks much better now. Oh my God, it's so cute. Look at this leaf, ah, looking so good. I can't wait to put this, hmm, maybe my Mills Bell. My Mills Bell is the most humid, so I'll probably put it in there so it can like probably like take off, but oh my God, obsessed, so cute. The next thing I'm gonna work on is the Syngonium Aria. I'm really hoping that this aria produces variegation on this freaking leaf because I don't know what it is about arias is that they do not have stable variegation like if they just keep producing like solid green leaves and that's so frustrating to me so I'm really hoping that it actually does what I needed to do for this plant I'm gonna put it in perlite yeah we're gonna do perlite for this one semi hydro perlite the next question that I have though is, is your boyfriend into plants too? Yes, my boyfriend is very much into plants as equally as I am. He helps me with every single thing plant related when he's not working. Um, he does have his own business as well. So I help him with that business and he helps me with this business. But yes, he's very much into plants. He understands plants 100%. He understands the cost of plants. He understands that plants are an investment. He knows how to care for them. If I tell him to go and water the plants, he knows exactly what to do. He understands everything about them. He knows what variegation is. Like he's like 100% like on the same level as me and he just totally gets it. So that's awesome having a partner that totally gets it because I know that this hobby is expensive and it's hard to explain sometimes. But yeah, I'm just so grateful that I have him. Since this guy doesn't have that much root yet, I'm just putting him in the little dessert cup like this, like the same one we did earlier. The next question that I have is, what do you recommend my first variegated plant should be? I think a good place to start, I mean, I don't know about, you know, how much anyone's trying to spend, but I think a good place to start is with some type of variegated Syngonium. Like Syngonium Albo is pretty cheap, uh, Syngonium Mojito, or any type of like, um, like variegated Philodendron, even like a Ring of Fire, that's really easy to care for. Um, Jose Bueno is a little up there in price, but super easy to care for. Um, the Pre-Seal Verde that has beautiful variegation. People think variegation, it doesn't always mean like some expensive plant like, you know, I don't, you don't need to have a Monstera Albo 
to have a nice variegated plant. There are some cheap ones out there and they're definitely underrated. So definitely check out like Syngonium Albos and stuff like that. They're really easy. And I definitely think that they're worth getting as your first plant. Like my first variegated plant was a Syngonium Albo and I still have it and I love that thing. It's beautiful. So this is what this guy is looking like in here. And I'm gonna fill the water probably up to like halfway as well. So all done. So I got all of these semi-hydro plants out of the way. The next big plant is actually gonna be the Parisio Verde. Ugh, this guy here. So you guys see his, look, his arrow roots are crazy, but his roots at the bottom are coming out. So I'm gonna just um, take them out, and see what's going on in here. My next question that I have was, what is my favorite plant? Um, I guess my favorite plant, I guess in my collection at the moment, would have to be my Monstera Albo. I'll always say that it's always my uh, go-to favorite plant. Oh my God, I really cannot get this even out of here. Like, this is kind of crazy. I waited way too long, oh God. This is the worst. Oh. oh my god, you guys. Can you look at this, please? Like, ugh. My Mastera Albo is definitely my favorite. It's the one with the really pretty, like, white variegation. It's, like, super white, but it's actually so stable, and it's just beautiful, and it doesn't brown or anything. To prevent browning, I just keep the humidity really, really high. Um, so if you're struggling with that, you might have to up your humidity somehow so that you don't get crispy brown like edges and stuff on your variegated plant. I'm just gonna bump them up like a size and a half to like this five inch here instead. I'm gonna keep them exactly the same. I'll figure out these arrow roots, I don't know. So the next question actually is, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? If I could have any superpower, I think it would be, hmm. Honestly, I think it would just be like being able to teleport or something. I don't know if that's a superpower, but I guess like teleporting or like able to fly, something like that. Because like, why wouldn't I want to do that? Like, just being able to like teleport wherever you want, that'd be so cool. Like, cause sometimes I just don't, I don't like taking a plane and stuff. I just want to be able to go when I need to go. I hate driving, I hate all of it, so. That would be the most ideal thing for me. This is what he looks like, he's all potted up looking fantastic look at these arrow roots and look at this leaf like this plant you guys it's very big <laughs> but I'm gonna get it onto a pole I, I promise um, just not right now mm -hmm. I'll do it this week because I have to make some so I'll do it this week and then I'll show you guys what it looks like on our weekly plant chores video but here is the pre-sale there day. Okay, so what's left is all of the seedlings. Um, don't know what I'm gonna do here, but let me see. I don't even know if I can get these out. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I'm so nervous. Okay, so these are the queens. Yeah, these are, yeah, these are the queens here. They're actually not too tangled like I thought. Sorry, I'm just trying to be very careful because they're so delicate, you know. Have you guys, um, have you guys actually grown anthurium seeds before? This is like my first time doing it. So I'm just gonna take off like the little leaves that are like older and like yellowing now. Dang, what do I put this in though? I don't want it to like rot. I know a lot of people use tree, tree fern fiber, I think that's what it is for seedlings. I have to try it, but dang. I wish I had something smaller. Like all I have is like these cups and they're like big as shit. Oh, they're so cute and little. I'm just so scared. Like I just don't want to like break them. But the moss is actually coming off pretty easily for the most part. So. Ugh, just I just hate dealing with moss because like they like you know the moss sticks to the roots and then like I feel like every time I transfer something from moss to whatever it rots and I just don't want these guys to rot 
I've waited so long for them. And then we have one more queen. So I have three queens. So let me answer the rest of the questions. The next one was, what was the first plant you ever bought? Unfortunately, my first plant that I ever bought was a freaking croton. Croton, croton, whatever. Why did I do that? The, I'm not gonna lie, like they're like actually kind of pretty, like when they're out growing in nature, like in Florida. So they're actually kind of pretty, but like I bought it home because it said on the thing that it was an indoor plant. It's not an indoor plant. I don't know why they market it like that. It's not, it's like for outside, but yeah, I bought that. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy. I love it. And that thing died. Like it literally died <laughs> because I didn't know what to do. But yeah, lesson learned. That's an outdoor plant, you know? Like that, it has no business being inside at all. So that was my first plant. And then after that, I started getting like some little like Syngoniums at like Lowe's. And then I had a small Monstera actually that I actually got in the very beginning of my plant journey as well. And I still do have it. I actually combined it into the big Monstera. So it's a special plant because I did get it within like a month of getting uh, plants as well. This one is doing so good. Oh my God. I think I got these seeds like only a few months ago. But yeah, they're like growing, man. Like these ones, I think I, I'm just gonna pop them like in like regular substrate that I, I use already and just see how they go. And then this one is just one seed. This is the, I think it is the Magnificum crossed with the Dr. Block seed. I want a Doc Block so bad, you guys. Oh my God, it's just so damn expensive. Yeah, I want a Doc Block so bad and I want a Aria so bad. I have expensive taste. I just don't feel like spending that kind of money. I just can't justify that kind of money. This one's got some like juicy roots. Oh my goodness, look at these roots. I'm actually shocked. Dang, they've been growing. Sheesh. Okay, cool. So they can like get potted up good enough for me hey I'm so excited ah. I want I don't know how long it takes to grow a seed to like a full plant maybe like a whole year or something like that but I keep all my seeds in the millspo which is over a hundred percent humidity and I keep them right underneath the grow light so I think that's why they've been growing so fast but seeds are a good way to get like rare plants for cheap if you want to if you have the patience to grow them out so we got these guys all right so I just figured out what I'm gonna do with them. I think I'm just gonna keep them together how they were originally. So like all the queens I'm gonna put back together, the two of these guys back together and then the solo one. I tried to pick out all of the, like the most grittiest part of the soil mix where it's not so chunky, you know, so that I can hold the moisture really well. And I'm just gonna do that um, for them. And then I'm just gonna water them really, really good. That's really it. I think that they'll, Honestly, I think that they're gonna be just fine. So I'm not really worried about it. So I'm just doing it like that. You can see. The next question I have was, what do you think is an underrated plant that we should know about? Honestly, I'm not, you know, there's nothing like hidden out here, but underrated, man. I think aglionemas are underrated. There's a lot of common like Aglionemas that are actually freaking gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Like the Aglionema Maria. I have one of those and it's the most easiest plant that I've ever taken care of. It's beautiful and it needs some more attention. To be fair, there's a lot of rare Aglionemas out there besides the Aglionema tricolor one. There are some other ones out there that are beautiful that nobody talks about, you guys. And I just feel that I would love to build my Aglionema collection. It's just the rare ones are very expensive because they're, you know, I guess that they're harder to find here. But yeah, definitely don't sleep on Aglionemas, man. They're nice. Like if you see them, they're freaking nice and they're easy care. We love easy care. So definitely don't sleep. They are awesome. So what I'm doing is just taking the soil mix in my hands and I'm just like kind of crushing it so it's really like fine and gritty. Cause you know, I like a good chunky mix, but for these guys, it needs to be a little bit thinner. Yeah, so that's like a little trick I do to make like a little bit less chunky is just break it down really. So this is the one. The next question I have is how is YouTube going for you? Honestly, 
it's like a lot of fun it's just hard man like <laughs> it is not simple as making a reel in five minutes like i make my reels in five minutes y'all i do not batch my content at all i make that in five minutes and i turn the app off like that's it but this man i gotta sit here and <laughs> record for like an, over an hour and then what i have to do is edit when i edited the last plant chores video i was up till two in the morning so i need to do better at editing throughout the week but recording and then getting all the clips together and then editing it and stuff it takes a lot of time so i mean overall i really do like it um and i'm very excited to like do this like maybe full time i don't know you know youtubers make a lot of money y'all i'm just saying youtubers make a lot of money so don't sleep on YouTube either. I know it might feel like really cringy at first, but a lot of people's making money out here. So your girl is out here trying to get monetized and you know, I'm in no rush to do it, but overall I'm happy with it. Like I, I like it. it. It does require a lot of patience though, for sure. And you know, I don't think it is meant for everybody. I like it. I enjoy editing. I enjoy editing pictures, stuff like that. I enjoy putting out this type of content because I enjoy watching this type of content. So it's not hard. Just make the content that you enjoy to watch. Like who cares? You know, somebody's going to like it. And I might think like this right here. I'm like, oh, this is so stupid. I'm just repotting plants. You know, somebody might like it. But yeah, it's great. Um, it's a lot of fun. You should definitely try it if you haven't already. This guy is next. The little queens. They are super tiny though. Oh well. I'm gonna just try. I'll just monitor these guys to make sure that nothing bad is happening. Because their roots are really little. But The next question I have is, do you think it's necessary to have an Ikea greenhouse cabinet? Necessary? Absolutely not. I would never say that, that it's necessary. Like, you don't feel that you need to have one. If you don't want to have one, just, like, don't have one. I personally like it because I like the look of them. It looks much nicer than having, you know, like, the plastic greenhouse. It matches my home decor a lot. So I appreciate that. And it's just, I just think it looks really sleek. Besides the looks, it does work having high humidity it definitely works but there's plenty of ways to up your humidity you know what i mean you don't need to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on an ikea cabinet because they are very expensive and if you don't know whatever they're priced at now that was not how expensive they were before so they their prices have definitely gone up like when i got my first rusta in december last december it was like 119 dollars and now it's like 150 or something yeah don't don't just be like out here wasting your money thinking it's like necessary because it's it's not necessary there's you know you you can grow plants and stuff without having that you don't need it if you do have plants that like require high humidity just stick them in a like a bin or something like a plastic bin like it's and put a lid on it <laughs> like you don't you really don't need to do the most and i feel that that's like really sad when i feel like people are just like they feel like they need to have certain stuff to like have plants like you don't like just pot it up and enjoy it this is a hobby that you're supposed to enjoy you know not like feel like you have to have what every single plant influencer has and everything like that and that's like something else i wanted to talk about is people who like buy rare plants just for instagram it might not be set up front but it is very obvious i will just say that don't buy plants just for instagram okay like you do not need a thousand dollar monstera aria to to prove yourself as a good plant parent or have a good collection on instagram like you don't need that i can just tell that somebody is doing something for social media like social media is fake you guys like come on unfortunately my camera died but um i did finish up potting the seedlings these are what they look like i gave everything a good watering as well while the camera was charging i think they're gonna be like completely fine as long as i keep this like moist enough they all should be fine they do not have drainage at the bottom so i'm keeping a tiny reservoir of water in there and i'm just gonna monitor them really but they look really good it has a crack on the side but it's not like leaking so it's 
still okay to use. I hope you guys enjoyed this chatty repot video. Maybe we can do something like this like every few weeks or something like that because you know plants always need to be repotted. And I will see you guys next week for the next plant chores video. Also if you have any suggestions on the type of videos you guys would like to see, anything like that, just let me know. I'm open to ideas. You can message me on Instagram. You can message me here on YouTube, wherever. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I will see you later. Bye.